Hey hey and welcome to this very different kind of video where today we're going to be taking a look at Doom but not as you may know it. In fact we're going right to the origins of Doom. This is the Doom technical preview. This predates the alphas and betas of the original Doom and this basically is here to showcase as a tech sort of demo what Doom was going to be. And you can see here there are sprites from enemies, but they are not programmed yet. So they're just kind of standing and walking on the spot. Now, the technical preview here only has a very small area. It's not particularly big to explore, but it is fascinating all the same. Because as you can see, the hood is completely different here. The weapon is, well, it's a shotgun, but it's not the shotgun we know. You can also see the pinky sprite there. It is interesting to kind of look at Doom at this very early point in its sort of development and realise that some of these enemies were planned all the way through. So you've seen an Imp, a Baron of Hell, a Pinky and another Baron of Hell here. But it is pretty cool that you can sort of explore this little slice of early Doom. There's not much here and there's not much reason you'd want to stay here for that long but as you can see there is a map in the top right hand corner that kind of serves as our waypoint here and as said this was never really designed to be showcased in any real way this was really just here because when obviously Carmack was working on the engine this was designed to showcase that and also the differences between this and Wolfenstein because even though we know, we know that eventually Doom would have like different sized he ceilings, etc, etc. You can see here, the ceilings are all the same size still. So this was probably still quite early in development. But one of the interesting things that you can do in this little tech demo is that you can manipulate the textures on the walls and the floors and the roof. So you can get an idea for the fact that they were already at this stage thinking about how they could make use of this new technology and sort of make these environments seem a bit different. The imp there does not look particularly pleased to see us. You see I'm changing the roof texture here. A lot of these textures would go on to appear in the final game and you can see that that baron is clipping out of the roof there. Also manipulating the light here so you can see the light levels have changed so now it's completely dark and now it's completely bright light goes on light goes off there isn't all that much here but it is fascinating to see this sort of little nugget of doom history this is the genesis of doom and we're now going to dive into the alpha version of this this is the 0.3 alpha now to be clear there were probably other alphas before this one obviously because it's the third iteration and those are not publicly available but the fact that we're getting to see like what would have been the story splash screen there and the credit screen and this swirling mess at the start of a menu it's pretty interesting I have to say but yeah we're not here to look at menus we're here to play some doom now the thing with this is there are actually three levels and at least two of them you may end up recognizing so you can see that even at this early stage of Doom, there were ideas for NPCs to be involved. So we're playing cards at the start here. Now this is a very simple room, obviously, but you'll recognize the textures on the floor, the roof. And I also don't recognize what this weapon's meant to be. It seems more like a ramming stick than anything else. It does make you wonder what the story would have been had they gone all the way to implementing a story for this. We can shift between weapons here, so we're not stuck with just the battering ram in here in this. So you can see we don't really have any effect on the enemies. You can see the UI as well is not that different here. Although you can change it in this, so you can get a bigger screen if you want to. Personally, I find this UI a bit charming. It's it's very early days, but it's still got a bit of, you know, intrigue about it. Plus, I would like that map to stay on the screen. 
the other layout, from what I can tell, didn't have the map and it was a bit more difficult to sort of navigate. But you may recognize elements of this level from E2M7. So even this early back, spawning bats did make an appearance. It is one of the earliest levels to make an appearance for sure. So for example, this is the room where you'd go to hit the red switch. And there's also some cell ammo in here in the final game. Obviously it looks very different and obviously it's not as boxy as this because in the final version it feels like a cavern. But they've also taken away the area with the Baron there. But this is the area with the spawning vats and this is where you'd walk down, there'd be an invulnerability here and you'd have the imps at the back of the room there. Can we go outside here? Yes we can. So this is actually the outside area in the final version of Doom. It is interesting that this room was always this dark. I never would have assumed this room was always going to be this dark but in the final version there's a door there where you can get some ammo and there's a plasma rifle over in the corner here. So you can definitely see how this level sort of survived into the final game and you'll see even more as we kind of head into this next area here this is where you fight the caco demon when you're going the other way and this is where the blue door is so if you look here that's where the chain gun would normally be and that's where you'd head off to get the yellow key and this is the opening room now obviously in the retail version of this of this it's a big white cavern with like white rocks on the outside but here it's it's more of a base they do have like little these weird fake doors here which i assume was put here to sort of like make the base feel bigger imagine having to fight a baron this close to the um start of the level so you'll see in a second that you can you can definitely tell the order of this level was flipped around because this is the room where you fight all those pinkies there's next to no boxes here, but there is still a pinky here. But what's really interesting is that the exit to this level is actually over in the corner of the room here. You can see the USC boxes are there. But yeah, the exit is actually over here. And you can see it's even labelled as the exit. So you can clearly see the original intention was for this to be the end of the level. Whereas we know in the final version of this level this ends up being pretty close to the start so you can see how like over time things have changed for this level so we're actually going to dive into this level here now you can see at the start of the level here we've got our companions here but what was really interesting to me about this one it took me a while to figure out which level this was when i first was playing it so i didn't recognize it until very near the end but I am incredibly confident that this is E2M2 and the very early stages of that level. So this is the big area where you fight the imps and there's a big desk here with a computer. And obviously that isn't in the final version of this level. But I am like 99% sure that is where that comes from. And you can see here this layout is pretty similar to what you'd see in E2M2. This is the area with the yellow key card and the um, the toxic puzzle that you have to walk across. And this is the area where, you, uh, to the left here, there's those slow moving platforms that raise up and down. And as we kind of head around here, this is the area where you pick up the green armor. And also there's a door there to take you towards the exit. And as we kind of continue to wander around here, you'll see other landmarks that you can probably identify from the general layout, not from the texture work, because obviously a lot of this texturing changes before the final game. But as we head down here, if you head, if you continue straight to the end there, that's where you get the blue armor. This is where you get the plasma rifle. Obviously, there's no area for that here. But what's also cool is that you can see over there on the right-hand side is where the exit would be. And this is where the crushers normally are, but obviously here they've made the corridor, you know, it's just a corridor here with those little indents. But this is the area where you pick up the blue keycard and obviously this is very different here because it splits into two.
but it still leads in the same general direction because if we were able to go down there we'd actually be heading straight back to where we were earlier with the desk so you can see that the general layout for this level didn't change all that much through the development of doom it's still very much e2m2 as you know it just with a few alterations here and there for example i don't think this room makes it into the final game but it is fascinating to see how the some of these levels did survive from this early in the game when i was playing this for the first time i actually didn't recognize any of this and i was just kind of wandering around thinking well this all looks you know interesting but very wolfenstein like because as you can see the roof hasn't still doesn't have like different definitions of height so it still all kind of has that Wolfenstein-esque feel to it even if it does run a bit smoother than Wolfenstein at this point but if we head down here you can see that that's where you would normally go to get that secret and also has those weird tech pane floors that we can't bother with I can't cross over the line dev here unfortunately and obviously there's no cheats that I know of to get you know through that line dev so all we can really do is watch and no before you ask we can't go into the first area where the boxes normally would be because there's a line dev blocking that and unfortunately no matter what I tried I wasn't actually able to cross over it which is a bit of a shame but you can see this is where the blue door would normally be and this is where you pick up the red key card so, yeah, I mean, it's cool to see E2M2 like this, I'm not going to lie. I did want to quickly shout out this little stump room here. It's nothing interesting, but it is in the alpha, so I thought I'd give it a mention. You can't really do much here other than spin around and look. But what is more interesting is this is E1M2, and you'll recognize it instantly from the silhouette of the starting area here. And yes, we are, once again surrounded by our friend doors here so you can see this is where the steps are in front of us and as we walk around here it'll become recognizable to you if you can't see it there's no elevator over there there's a weird computer terminal you can also see that there is no way to get to where the red key card well is in the retail version although you can walk through this little centerpiece here there is no area where the shotgun is, so that only gets added in later. There's no secret there as well. You can kind of see they've got ideas to put something there though, because they've obviously got a different texture on the wall. So maybe they kind of felt that they had to put something there, to, you know, because it was a big empty space. This is where the red door normally is. So this maze, the opening part here, is incredibly similar to what you see in the final game. But as you kind of explore the maze, you quickly realise that it's actually quite different at this early stage. So as we're making our way around here, you'll see that it's not quite a cohesive maze yet. It's just different areas that you can kind of wander out to. So as we kind of explore more, you'll come to realise that this is nothing like what the final maze would end up being. And that's fine because ultimately, you know, this was very early in development and they were probably just putting this here just to sort of show we we're going to do something with this in the future. Even the texture works very different at this point. Doesn't feel at all like the maze that you would eventually come to see and love. It should also be noted that there were no sound effects in this alpha version so there's no gun sounds there's no music and throughout all of these alphas and betas they generally don't have those until towards the end hmm. makes you wonder if they were going to put a key item in here like a key card or something because having that lit while the rest of this is dark kind of makes me feel like they had intentions for this to be a lot more important than it ends up kind of being in the final game because in the final game this area is completely optional you don't have to come here if you don't want to but here it kind of feels like it's a bit more important this is that weird little sort of walkway where you'd 
kill the imp and grab the med pack, but obviously it's a bit wider there. So you can see here that there's still a crossroads, but this leads in a completely different direction. So this doesn't lead to that sort of toxic pool with the switch in the middle. It just kind of leads back to the starting area where the steps were. So this functions completely different. And it's not the only part because as we head towards the staircase where you'd normally fight the imps and the zombie men, it's gone. There is no staircase here at all. It's just this computer room, which you know, I guess that's a choice. Now, what's also interesting is that there's a whole new bit here that's a bit wider and has a few more nooks and crannies to kind of explore, but it kind of leads to the same place, you know, because it leads to that Romero room where you've got the high ledges with enemies shooting down on you, which he was very proud of. Um, but yeah, you can see there's no way to get to the exit. I just wanted to show off this alpha because I find it so fascinating and getting to experience it was actually pretty fun. I hope you've enjoyed it and if people are interested, I would be interested in covering the future alphas. Let me know what you think in the comments.